The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide. I'm remiss if I was here and didn't ask you some political questions. Um, uh, do you think the GOP race is over? Is Mitt Romney the nominee at this point, or do you think there's still a chance for someone to displace him? Well, I hesitate to say it's over. What do I know? I mean, um, the fact of the matter is a number of these states have proportional uh, voting, which means uh, uh, you get uh, assigned delegates based on how many votes. Again, it's not winner-take-all. Some states are winner-take-all. I don't consider Romney exactly the powerhouse front-runner. So you never know what could happen. On the other hand, some of these candidates could get blown out in South Carolina. I see Ron Paul is going to hang on like a, a Doberman biting on a pant leg. He's not going to let go. So we all know what the problem is from my perspective. The problem is we haven't had one conservative to rally behind, one conservative that the public can generally agree on because so many of them have weaknesses and so many of them lately don't even sound conservative. And by the way, that includes Romney from my perspective. I'm very concerned about this because um, it is essential that we defeat Barack Obama, in my view. This isn't a Republican thing. This is a Republic thing. And um, I'm glad that there is a, a very fulsome, vigorous uh, primary. I support that sort of thing. Uh, but I just hope in the end we come up with the right candidate to defeat him. Uh, you mentioned Ron Paul. Uh, I can see this happening, but let's say pigs fly and Ron Paul somehow became the Republican nominee. Uh, could you vote for Ron Paul in a general election against Barack Obama? I'd have to write somebody in. Because Ron Paul's foreign policy is so antithetical to traditional conservative foreign policy, whether it's Goldwater, whether it's Reagan, whether it's a number of other, you know, they like to point to uh, Taft in the 1950s. They have two or three conservatives they can point to. I have hundreds of conservatives I can point to. But that aside, in the world today, um, no, because I, 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 I find that position to be the Kucinich McGovern wing of the Democrat Party. It's even extreme for them. So, no. And I, I'll tell you, I, I have other problems with him. I don't think his interpretation of the Constitution is always accurate. I hope that was enough for everybody to see. Uh, I didn't do the whole thing. It was just to show you some stuff. And then you can listen to Ron Paul's speech and then the speech after that about fighting for somebody's rights. And this guy don't even know what he's talking about. God bless. Heads up. Much love. And I hope you enjoy the video and spread it if you can. Hello, this is Ron Paul with your weekly update for January 16th. Last week, the Supreme Court heard arguments in Sackett versus EPA, a case of blatant federal agency overreach and abuse of private property rights. Without any proof or reason and no chance for appeal, the EPA determined that a small, single home lot was a protected wetland. The owners, Mike and Chantel Sackett, were ordered to haul construction already underway to remove all the work already done and plant trees and shrubs consistent with a wetlands environment. After making these costly changes, the Sacketts then would have to wait several years for the EPA to decide if they would be allowed the use of their own property. Refusal to comply with these outrageous and arbitrary commandments would result in daily fines greater than the value of the property. Outraged, the Sacketts sought relief through the courts, but court after court determined that they had no standing. The actions of the EPA were not subject to judicial review until a mountain of fees had already been assessed. This is just another example not only of how federal agencies wield enormous power over the average citizens, but also how little practical protection our courts provide when such citizens are harmed by those agencies. Constitutionally, when the government determines private property is needed for public use, it is taken through eminent domain. In that process, the owner is due fair market value in compensation for their condemned property. The EPA not only refuses to compensate the Sacketts for effectively taking their land, they are assessing 
or threatening to assess ruinous penalties that greatly exceed the value of the land. They arrogantly claim the power to determine how certain property owners can use their land while assessing fees or ordering actions that must be undertaken at the property's owner's expense. All of this is done at the administrative level with no judicial oversight. In short, the EPA does not believe the Constitution applies to them. A decision on this case is expected this summer. My fervent hope is that the Supreme Court will thwart this rogue agency and stand up for property rights and the right of people to have their day in court when they find themselves unwittingly accosted by the EPA. My own district in Texas is no stranger to these issues, again, with no evidence to support their decision. The EPA arbitrarily determined Matagorda County to be an ozone non-attainment region, meaning the air quality is substandard. In fact, the population in this county has been decreasing, and the small amount of emissions reported from the Matagorda County has actually declined in recent years. The Texas agency charged with environmental protection disagrees with the EPA. Yet Matagorda County, like the Sacketts, find itself at the mercy of the EPA. New business and construction will be stymied until the Washington masters are satisfied. Unless Congress acts, EPA bureaucrats will continue to inflict potentially devastating economic consequences on communities like Matagorda County and the people like the Sacketts. Destroying the economy is no way to save the environment. A thriving economy and a fair judicial system that respects property rights and the Constitution provides the best protection of the environment. Thanks for calling this update. A new update is placed on this number, 888-322-1414, every Monday. The written text can be found on my website, www.house.gov slash Paul under the heading Texas Straight Talk. Thanks for calling. You can't use it, that you can't build your family home on it. You have a right to your day in court. That's a right that, uh, up until now, EPA has said no to. It's a right that the Ninth Circuit below said no to. But today, we've urged the Supreme Court, on behalf of the Sackets, to say yes, to say yes to the protection of private property rights and to the importance of judicial review to protect those private property rights. Because ultimately, EPA, like any federal agency, is not a law unto itself. Even EPA must abide by the constitutional protections for private property rights that our founders enshrined. And people like the Sacketts can't have their dream home and their dreams to build that home trampled upon by an agency run wild. Thank you, and I'd like to introduce uh, Mike Sackett for his remarks. Hello. This is my wife, Chantel. We're darn grateful to be here today to take this opportunity to stand up for property rights in the Constitution, rights of all Americans, all of the American people in this country. We want to thank many, many people across this country who have expressed support our, our battle of property rights to make sure the EPA is not above the law. We want to thank our attorney with, with the Pacific Legal Foundation for getting us to the Supreme Court. We want to thank the 10 states that submitted support of our case. Our story is David versus Goliath. We're a hardworking couple fighting the federal bureaucracy with, with them having unlimited resources. Our story is not complicated. We are a small business. Priest Lake, Idaho. We always wanted to live near the lake. Actually, we wanted to live on the lake. It's very expensive to live on the lake. So when a piece of property 500 feet from the lake with a view of, of Priest Lake, we bought it for $23,000. My wife went to Bonner County. She got the building permit checklist. We did everything on that checklist. And we started working. We did everything right. Our lot is in a platted subdivision with a sewer hookup. There are houses on three sides and county roads on two sides. So, so the next thing we did is we started laying gravel for the foundation. We were nearly done with this when we were blindsided by the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency. Three officials showed up out of the blue and ordered us to stop work with no credentials and nothing in writing to tell us what we were doing wrong. The three, th the three EPA officials that showed up 
told us we were building on a wetland and demanded, demanded, where is your permit? So we said, what are you talking about? There's no standing water on this property. There's no flow of water off our property. And EPA has never stopped our neighbors from building their houses. We asked, give us some details in writing, spelling out what we did wrong. Well, after we sent them two certified letters, we finally got something in writing seven months later, the infamous compliance order. We knew this wasn't a wetland and we had scientific evidence, but the EPA didn't care. So they hit us with the compliance order. They told us to remove the gravel, put the site back the way it was, plant wetlands plants that were never on that property, and to maintain and fence the property for three to five years, apply for a permit, even though the EPA told us on May 31st, 2007, that the EPA would not issue us a permit. This would cost tens of thousands of dollars more than what we paid for this lot. And if we didn't comply, we are subject to $37,500 a day. Can you imagine that? Going to bed every night with that on your mind? By now, we're up over $40 million in fines. It's literally terrifying. We thought, how do we get out of this? There's going to be nothing left of our business, nothing left of our lives. 40 jobs would be lost. But the EPA said we couldn't directly appeal their claim that our land is wetlands, and the Ninth Circuit backed them up. It said we'd first have to go through a long and expensive and probable feudable permitting process and be turned down. Thank goodness the Supreme Court has now heard our case. Thank goodness for Damian Schiff and the lawyers and friends that we have at the Pacific Legal Foundation for defending us. Yes, we are fighting for ourselves, but bigger than that, we're fighting for everyone else in this country that owns property, large or small. Can EPA take over your land calling it wetlands without meaningful, meaningful direct judicial review? We believe property owners have their right to their day in court and the EPA has to be subject to the rule of the law. Thanks.